Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Well, hello. Welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast about all the crap we love to talk about on ye old bravs. My name is Ronnie. Your fr I'm your friend, Ronnie. And that's my friend, Ben, over there, who's also your friend. We're old friends, guys. Hi, Ben. Unfortunately, everyone, I hate to break it to you all. I'm everyone's enemy today. Yes. <laughs> I'm Ben. Hi. How, how's it going? <laughs> welcome your to your friend, show, Ronnie. Ben. Welcome to your life. Ben, man, will go. Welcome <laughs> to your life. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. It's a Below Deck podcast day. We're very excited to talk about that. Um, come see us in Europe, London, Birmingham, Dublin. Any of you out there? You coming? You coming? You coming? We're going to be there. So should you. We're going to be there in May. Get your tickets at watchwhatcrappens.com. We're also going to be in L.A. for a small, intimate little gathering. A little show we're doing at the Kookaburra Lounge in Hollywood for the Netflix is a joke comedy festival. Also available on uh, Net uh, watchwhatcrappens.com, as well as links to our Patreon, which is where you'll get this video, all our videos, and our bonus episodes. This week, we are going to do a trailer trash preview of the house of the dragon season two which is coming out soon and we will be recapping for wondery plus on our show called winter is crappening what do you think of that that was a mouthful i'm lisping more than usual today my tongue has enlarged in my mouth for some reason and my face looks like raw meat because i went to a severe micro needling session with a girl who's lovely but must have had a terrible morning because good god she stomped on me look at me look was at it me. Was it the queen from House of the Dragon? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, she did a great job. Uh, and I'm going to look like a fucking baby next week. So enjoy good. this meat face, everybody. <laughs> ben, how are you doing today? I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm feeling very fulfilled. I've been like making healthy choices over the past 48 hours, which is so rare. I made lentils. I did yoga. I did Peloton. I'm feeling like I'm doing the right things in life. Which means mm. that probably the second half of this week will be a shit show. <laughs> Which <laughs> means we're nearing wreck time, okay? <laughs> Which yeah. means like, oh, that's how you always know I'm about to go traveling again. Because um, just as I establish good habits and routines, I leave. And then it all goes to shit for then three months. So I like it. I like that you can think ahead. Yeah, so I'm um, a little inside into my life right now. I'm the opposite. I'm like, well, we're going to be traveling to Europe. I'm going to eat all of the processed foods I can because I'm not going to be able to get corn syrup <laughs> for a while. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I'm already like, I just I had to buy a new piece of luggage when I was in New York because my other piece of luggage broke. And so I was like, it, then I was like, okay, so how's this going to fit? And then it turns out that European airlines have different standards for overhead and carry on than American airlines. And so of course, American airlines allow for lots of big stuff, but European is like small and petite. So now I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm already thinking about what am I going to pack and how am I going to make it last? And how's this going to work? And how's it going to fit in the bag? And should I do carry on? Should I maybe have a, should I have something that I, that I check after all, but what if it gets stolen? But why am I thinking about it getting stolen? Don't be such a nervous Nelly and yada, yada, yada. So yeah, I'm going well, down a path. Yeah, that's a spiral. It's going to be a month long spiral coming yeah. to you next on Watch What Crap. Coming to you for the next month on Watch What Crap Ends. Exactly. Slowly spiraling day by day. What am Speaking I going to plug my? What am I going to plug my computer into? How do yeah. plugs work? Got to get your adapter. Make sure. Make sure you do that. Um, well, today, guess what, guys? Travel. Today we have an adapter for those of you who need to bridge your citizenship from Housewives World into the Below Deck World. And that adapter is Jill Zarin. Jill Zarin. <laughs> from Real Housewives of New York, possibly one of the most grating human beings to ever be born onto this beautiful planet of ours. Okay? I think no matter what part of the world you're in and no matter where we hope to travel you would probably find this woman extremely annoying and that brings that brings us all together guys yeah but you know um uh the episode ended and my reaction was basically like god i love jill zarin <laughs> Oh, God, I just really enjoyed her on this episode. To me, it reminded me of, like, the first two seasons of Roni, when, with this overbearing Yenta, 
who I was like, I, everything about her should make me just irritated with her. But I just leave being like, I really enjoy her. I'm like, I don't disagree with anything she said. Is she totally overbearing? Is she totally excessive? Yes. But I was like, but she's not necessarily wrong. Was she wrong? Was she, were any of her notes wrong? I'm not even saying wrong. I'm saying terrible. You know <laughs> what I mean? She's just terrible. <laughs> so sorry. There's just, here's she what she is, made me realize. She is, but I enjoyed it. She made me realize what a quiet area I live in. I remember when I first moved to the country, I couldn't sleep because my ears would ring because it was so quiet at night. I had to use white noise and stuff to go to sleep. And once I finished watching this episode, I started getting tinnitus again. <laughs> It's like, wow, it's really quiet without Jill Zarin talking. It's too quiet. Like, I can't handle it anymore. That's how much she gets in your fucking room. <laughs> you know what we need? Why aren't there forks here? You know what we need? Something to wipe the spots off of the forks. I'm sorry I'm complaining, but you know what? It makes it better. That's why people have their mouths. She really was acting like she was on some show, like on the Travel Channel, if that even still exists, of like where you go onto a yacht and you fix it up. She was really thinking, it seemed like she thought she was the host of some other program. Um, it was definitely, it was too much. Uh, but the thing is this, is that other, other yacht charter guests that we've seen on all these shows come on and they complain about things and they're very con either condescending or they're passive aggressive or they're just like mean. And she's just like, no, let me just tell you, you should do this. You should fix this and it'll be better. That's all. <laughs> and I just, I kind of just appreciated her directness just sort of like a, yeah you should do this put out some crudités that's you know that's all i need some crudités you know what a good a good yacht has toiletries over here you know <laughs> i was like i liked it i know i've been everywhere okay well let's get out uh let's get into it so i did not notice this line last week but when zandy gets all pissed off at the end because sunny is crying thinking that zandy is flirting with ben and she's going off about uh, about how annoying this girl is. <laughs> she goes, like, catch me outside. I'm done with this shit. Yeah. Like, yes, catch me outside. I it's love nice it. To see the I think Kat Zandy's borders. saying that. Yeah. It was not what I would ever expect Zandy to say. <laughs> and she says it in such a low key way, in her Zandy way. Catch me outside. I'm done with this shit. Catch me outside. I'm done with this shit. Yeah. Uh, I love Zandy. She's great. And I feel like she's so patient because she is like a first stew who's just like stuck in the third stew position, basically. And <laughs> she's just like constantly dealing with idiots. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to it. It's dramatic music and Ben and Sonny have just had a little spat. And he's like, oh, I'm touchy with her, but it's not sexual at all. Let me look deeply into your eyes while I kiss you. And then outside, Zandi is talking to Fraser. And she's like, why do I need to change myself to make a two-year-old kid feel better about herself? Because that's <laughs> the thing with two-year-old kids. You have to be nice to them because they're babies. At least that's yeah. what everybody tells me. I will argue with a fucking two-year-old. I don't care. I don't oh, care I how will. Old they are. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah. Oh, I've argued with them. I'll listen. I will argue with an old person. I will argue with a baby. I will, because those are two categories of people that I don't feel like will um, beat me in a fight. So <laughs> I got news for you. I famously. I've been beat up by a two year old. <laughs> I famously got into a fight with uh, an elderly lady at the pool at LA Fitness once. And I, <laughs> but, but if you put me with a lady who's maybe like, you know, from age, uh, 18 to um, 67. <laughs> I'm not touching wow. them. Not touching. <laughs> wow. Elder they can abuse. all beat me up. They can I all beat me it. up. I love that we're opening with elder abuse. <laughs> I have to go. Listen, it's like the laws of nature. You just you gotta go with what you can what you can get. <laughs> you gotta you gotta pounce on what you can what you can kill. So meanwhile, Sunny is now doing that thing that really makes me crazy, where she is now in bed with Ben, apologizing to Ben after he was just all over Zandi to make her jealous. What the fuck yeah. is wrong with this girl? Okay. I can't stand also, it. Also, Ben, did you read this thing that Ben put out where he's like, oh, I'm super disappointed in Captain Carey for suggesting that, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't know how to dock a boat. This could ruin my reputation in this industry. Like he's coming out, like trying to come against Captain Carey. You fucking moron. How do you think that looks in the industry? Captain yeah. Carey has been nothing but nice to you and gave you an amazing fucking opportunity. And now you're shit talking him. And then Sun Sonny's under there telling people off in the comments 
Being oh like, God! You sound what like a an piece ugly of shit. troll. You sound like an ugly troll to be mean to Ben. Oh come on, like, Sonny! Oh God, Sonny, you're a goddamn mess. Okay, Ben, that's so ridiculous. Especially because Captain Carey could have hired another bosun and demoted Ben back down into deckhand, and he didn't. He actually has let let him like maintain that opportunity, and so he's gonna say like, "Oh, Captain Carey made it seem like I'm not like qualified." That could have like no one's listening during those scenes because they're all the same. It's always like. If we don't get this boat right into the slip, not only will it sink, but it's attached to the docks and it could cause all the other boats to sink as well. We gotta get this, you know, it's fine. It's fine, we docked, we docked. Yeah, he it hasn't said cares. anything. He said, I don't know if he's ready or something like that. He doesn't know if you're ready. He's just trying you out. That's the whole point, you ass. And then he's worried about how he's gonna look in the industry. How do you think it looks? And you're coming out with this the week that you're fucking your subordinate on tv like yeah and you're concerned about how you your professionalism you don't like your professionalism <laughs> question if you were professional you would say listen oh, i didn't mean to flirt with her or hurt your feelings but i'm your boss now and i should probably not be fucking you on national this television at the same time how about that this guy talk about a fragile male ego this is the guy who actively undermined Jared, who Jared was not great, but he actively undermined him too, and even undermined Sonny as well. And then now he is going to complain that he feels a little undermined. I mean, talk about someone who is really only concerned about himself. Yeah, he's gross. So she, anyway, Sonny's apologizing to him, going, It's not on you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's not on you. And he's like, You need to trust me, which, no, you don't. You are you an idiot? <laughs> don't no. trust him. And so he's they start making out. And I just wrote you because that's how I feel. Gross. It's a big I'm grossed you. out. It's a big you. So uh, then Zandi is like, mic drop for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> because she's just told off Sunny in her mind. She's like, yeah. I'm not taking care of two year old. Mic drop. Catch me outside, mic drop. Remember when I said that? Catch me outside. Mic drop. So. Um, <laughs> So then Kyle comes up uh, behind Barbie in her cabin because they're sort of flirting and everything. And she's like, um, I'm actually going to bed, actually. So, like, don't touch me. Oh, actually, that feels great. Because he, then he starts to massage her. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, their low, their low flame, their low, t low wattage romance continues. They're simmering, if you will. Simmering. And so Zandy goes to bed and she's like, 30 years old and I'm involved in child's play. And then Kyle <laughs> wakes up Barbie in the middle of the night with his snoring. And she's like, okay, then get the fuck out now. You can get the fuck out now. Okay, just <laughs> shut the fuck up. I heard you snoring right now. Go. Just go. Go. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, Barbie and I have formed a relationship of that, I'm sure. But is it a friendship? Time will tell. <laughs> Kyle voice. <laughs> I feel like a tingle of joy inside when I hear it. Well, it's so, basically me doing this guy, Anton, who's on Love Island, and he was Scottish. So I'm just doing Anton's voice. I'm like, well, they're both Scottish, so they sound exactly the same, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so upset we're not going to Scotland on our tour. Hey, we've got time. We can go back. Well, we could just go there. We yeah, could just we go. Know. I mean, I don't really understand geography or where anything is, which is why I've made zero plans, <laughs> zero travel plans. We could plans. theoretically. We could theoretically just go up there after Birmingham. Like nothing yeah. is locked in with 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 any of our. We can do whatever we want. We can anywhere do with internet. We haven't booked bed. anything. We can go everywhere, everywhere in Europe, guys. Yeah, we can do everything, everywhere all at once. Okay. As long as there's some laundry, by the way. I'm gonna need a. I'm gonna need a washing machine at some point. As in, I'm like, taking Tide work. Pods and I'm counting on sink water. I'm just going to wear the same thing every day, so I don't have to carry anything around. Okay, so it's 7 a.m., and it's 31 hours before charter. And Barbie's like, oh, my God, are you still here? I'm not a morning person. Don't even fuck with me, Kyle. He's like, I was just <laughs> saying good morning. She's like, die, Kyle. Just fucking die. So you don't talk to me. I'm going. I'm going. I'm literally going. Pretty good, Dean. See you in 12 years. <laughs> um, so... Uh, now we see okay so dylan the new guy we in case anyone didn't listen to our vanderpump rules recap or whatever for some reason that is still yet to be explained dylan showed up on vanderpump rules last week like a day after he made his debut on uh below deck and can still i ask very why impressed. everybody is so shocked and thrilled that this happened that somebody from below deck showed up as a background character why is that so weird to people i mean 
it's like a lot of emails about i don't i just don't get why it's so weird i mean they met probably at BravoCon or something and then they hung out for a drink or something because I mean, what, what because deckies deckies in america linger in fort lauderdale they they hang out there they they become friends or whatever it's just weird that there would be a decky that makes their way to Vanderpump Rules, you know. And you most know, people that hang on to Vanderpump Rules people tend to just be in West Hollywood trying to make it as something, you know. No. You know why? Huh? This is why I'm not surprised. Then I see what you're saying. I totally understand what you're saying uh, because what, nights that I've been to Pump, I've met below deck guys there. They all hang out with those. All the tall ones well, hang Alex, out together. Alex from season one, I think, works in Marina Del Rey. I think he even was like friends with Kristen. He may have been shown up on on Vanderpump Rules at one point. Yeah, they're around more than you think, everybody. But anyway, Dylan's there probably because he's like, um, I work out, I work out, so I'll be there. I'll be there. I, I used to be the fat kid, but I'm not anymore. Now I'm thinner than everybody. I can't wait to be in West Hollywood. It's gonna be amazing. It's great. I'm sorry. I'm just laughing at the at at your ominous warning. They're around a lot more than you think. They're fucking below deck everywhere. Like, below deck people are everywhere. This is going to be like an article on Collider that's going to show up on Facebook. <laughs> below deck men are more, below deck men are around more than you may think. Here's what to look out for. Yeah, they're everywhere. When I saw them at Pump, it was below deck people, Vanderpump Rules people, obviously. And The Bachelor, a couple of The Bachelor guys. I was like, oh, oh my God, guys. what a what a STD laden crew. Like that's I know. That is a that is a crew to have some hand wipes around. <laughs> yeah. Could definitely use some uh Jill Zarin tips on how to keep that uh, area <laughs> spiffier. The tip specifically. Tips on the tip. Tips so tip. Zandy is talking to the captain because they like love each other in the mess hall. They love having conversations in the mess hall. And yeah. so he's like, just checking in on you. And she's like, I'm good today. You know, I'm in a good mood because I don't know why. I think it's because before I went to bed, I was feeling stressed. And then I dropped the mic. <laughs> catch me outside. Catch me, catch me outside. He's like, all right. Well, as I like to say, Vinny de Sorida Yakala. That's, that's what we say in Turkish. <laughs> Is that catch me outside in Turkish? <laughs> sure is. Well, I think it is. Or maybe I just ordered a bagel. Either way, <laughs> I'll accept it. Uh, so he helps her unpack stuff, I guess, and they're stalking the kitchen. And then Barbie and Sunny are talking, and Sunny's like, oh, my God, I need to get a fucking grip, huh? And she goes, you seriously do. You seriously do. You think people are chasing Ben? <laughs> ben, seriously. <laughs> And then Sunny gives us one of these annoying monologues where she says, when I have a couple of drinks and alter ego comes out, her name is Sabrina. She's a jealous bitch. The guys I used to date were like little assholes that would cheat on me. And Sabrina's like my little protective shield. But get her out of here. Tequila Sabrina. No, no. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, she's not your alter ego. She's you. Okay. Just so you know, that's just you. And second of all, she's not your protective shield. What should be your protective shield would be higher standards or therapy <laughs> yeah i would say it's not your alter ego it's your ego <laughs> and your protection needs to be condoms because you do not need to be xeroxing ben for this world okay it is and also <laughs> speaking of vanderpump rules hangers on tequila sabrina no we that's have one tequila katie ma'am that's all we need okay goodbye yeah goodbye yeah well i mean it's just like the way just when people do this like i have this alter ego like i got beers above <laughs> Uh, in Zim, when people do that, it's just their way of actually abdicating any sort of responsibility for their actions because it's like a funny thing, but it's like I just become a different person, and that's and it's like I can't control like whatever I do, I'm not responsible for because that was Sabrina and that's not Sunny. It's like, mm, yeah, no, it was you. It was no, you. But that, that's I mean that's a legit thing. That's why you should murder people drunk. And I always tell my nieces, you know, here's some advice. Don't murder people sober. You have no excuse. I mean, when you're drunk, you can be like, oh my God, I became Sabrina. Sabrina's been through a lot of shit, you guys. You want me to tell you what Sabrina's been through? And then you can unload all the shit you've seen on Lifetime movies on Sabrina and get off probably, or like, at least get a suspended sentence or like a lighter sentence. But you kill people sober, you're fucked. Sabrina, the low self-esteem witch. That's what we should call her. 
uh, so uh, now we're in the mess, and Barbie's like, "Hey, Dylan, how are you?" He's like, "Amazing! I'm amazing. How about you?" I'm high amazing. five. High five. High five. High five. Let's give high fives. And she goes, I'm not really that fucking amazing. I'm hungover. So then Fraser is in bed and he's like, I am so hungover. Look at me. I'm a hideous, disgusting, awful, fat mess. And I'm hungover. Awful. So then Sunny goes up to Zandy and Sunny's like, oh, I just want to apologize. And Zandy's like, it's okay. It's okay. I just, I was irritated. And, and she's like, I know, but there's no reason to be. I mean... Does anyone actually ever want to fuck that strange green bean of a man? Like, and Ben is kind of eating, do. watching them. <laughs> He's like watching them uh, try and get over the drama that he helped cause on purpose. It's just like yeah. sitting there watching it like it's a like it's a TV show, you know, which it is. Um, <laughs> and Sunny's like, but I'm sorry, though. And she goes, you're good. You can catch me inside. Okay. She's like, oh, my God, thank you so much. She actually caught me while I was outside. So we're all good. We're fine now. <laughs> so then Ben's giving instructions to the deckies about things, you know, wipe this, pull the anchor here. And then Fraser is just like hoping that he has a stew that comes in because, but they haven't heard anything about any new stews. And then Captain Carey is talking to um, Norma Dundee and he's like, oh, I need a new stew. Could you please send over some resumes? Thanks, mate. All right, I'll get right on that. I've got a gal named Sheila and a Sheila named Sheila and then another <laughs> Sheila named Gal. Who'd you like to see first? All right, we got a new stew. Her name is Nicole Kidman. She really takes any role these days. Will you accept her? She's like, we come to the yacht for the experiences. <laughs> uh, so now Sonny and Kyle have small talk. She asks where he's from. He's from Edinburgh. And he's like, me and my mom bought an Airbnb north of Scotland. I have a room upstairs. I haven't seen my mom in, in a donkey's ass. <laughs> Say that literally. I was, every every day I'd wake up, I'd go and see the don donkey and be like, is my mom in there? Never in there. <laughs> we used to have a donkey, actually. And if you looked at its ass close enough, you could see my mom. <laughs> Miss that donkey. <laughs> my mom raised me until I was on, on my own until I was five. And then my stepdad popped up. And then my biological dad popped up on Facebook when I was 15, right? And I spoke to him for maybe a day. And then I realized, hey, fuck you. <laughs> it's not up to you to jump into my life whenever you feel like it. So I told him to fuck off. <laughs> and my dad, my stepdad isn't dad. He adopted me. And uh, <laughs> fuck, you know, Facebook, man. All these, I feel like so many guys from Below Deck are going to be using Facebook in 10 years to be like, hey, hey, it's me. <laughs> How's Alaska going? Just wanted to check in on you. <laughs> I've been trying to call you for 10 years, but really haven't had service. <laughs> yeah. Great, it's um, not the best on boats. So <laughs> hope you're doing great. Maybe we can catch some coffee sometime. What if this is one of those strange multiverse time traveling things and Jared is actually Kyle's father? <laughs> And he's traveled back in time. <laughs> Kyle's like, we bought a room. We bought an Airbnb with a portal to Alaska. I've been raised. <laughs> oh, it's all sorts of funkiness. So it's like Jared went back in time, but Kyle also had a portal across the world. <laughs> I go back there once a year just to see if the cricket rings. I was a big fan of watching the movie The Bear growing up. So I sometimes go to Alaska through my portal just to see if there are any bears that want to chase me around. So he has this like <laughs> deep story and then Sonny's like, I'm from Canada and I went to boarding school. He's like, oh, fascinating stuff. Your mother, do you ever see her in the ass of an animal? She's like, mm. She's like actually in a moose. In, in Canada, it would be a moose. And I actually have. It's weird. So Fraser is talking to the captain about the stew. He's like, are we getting a new stew? And he's like, it's a busy season. It's animal control. How's this chef doing? He's like, oh, I think he's just putting too much on his plate. No pun intended. <laughs> There's a shit show in there. Filthy, filthy, floor to ceiling filth. Everywhere I go, I just can't handle it. I'm doing so much. I'm doing so much delegating. I simply do not have anyone else to delegate to. <laughs> Well, you know, chefs, chefs are artists, and they can be quite sensitive. I had a friend of mine who came and worked for me. She was a mess over the whole of, over a mole being in the house. Okay, but I, I didn't see what means. the big. That's what I yeah, heard What too. was that? I I went back like five times. I was like, what was in her house? She's a mess over the mole. <laughs> was it mold? Was it a mole? Yeah, there was a mole in the house. Maybe that's an Australian saying. Like, 
oh, it's like if you're in over your head, you say, oh, she's got a mole in the house. She a mole, mole in the house. I'm going to look at it. says, it's unusual to find a mole in the house, but it does happen. Moles create complex tunnels underground. Okay. Is but it the thing saying, is this, they're on a boat. Hmm. There's a mole on the yacht, dear Liza, dear Liza. There's a mole on the yacht, dear Liza, a mole. <laughs> <laughs> These are all about espionage, everything I'm reading, because, uh, you know, the mole. Okay, or Gretchen Mole, who, you know, was Gretchen always mole. like, oh, my God, this is the up-and-coming actress of our always. time. And then it's like, I mean, great job on Boardwalk Empire 10 years later. What? Ha <laughs> why, why haven't we given Gretchen a chance? I love Gretchen Well, mole. that was the issue that my chef had. She was there. She was in a mess over the fact that Gretchen Mole never became a thing. And I didn't if see what the big deal was. she had to make was. one more quesadilla for the Gretchen <laughs> Mole that never showed up to Taco Tuesday. <laughs> I didn't see what the big deal was. Starlets come, starlets go. I mean, whatever happened to, you know, Maria Conchita Alonso, you know what I'm saying? So oh, I didn't well, how dare fuck. you? How dare you ask? <laughs> Fucking love Maria I mean, Maria. How about Gina. Valeria Galeno? All right, that's a better question. <laughs> I'm not offended by that one. Claire Duvall. But here's the big here's the deal. My chef friend was very upset about Gretchen Moore still being in a house. <laughs> And I didn't see what the big deal was. Oh, I didn't give a fuck, actually. And guess what came from that? I ruined a friendship. I can't even get a text back from Gretchen herself. And it's because of the pressure that I put on her. Now, Anthony is a great chef, and I don't want to ruin him. Mostly because he looks like the guy from Traders, and he was great on The Good Wife. So I don't want to mess that relationship up, too. Listen, Gretchen Moore may not call me back, but the MC from Cabaret, goddamn will. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Sometimes when I look at Anthony Oshef, I wonder, was he ever left in the middle of an automatic door at the supermarket as a child? Feels like those doors closed on his face a few times. Am I right? Wow. <laughs> what did Anthony do? He has a lot on his plate. That's Just what he did. Right into straight up Anthony abuse. He has a lot on his plate. Servings are too big. <laughs> too much food. They're too heavy. Students can't lift it up the stairs. There's a mole. Gretchen Mole has a, has, has a petite woman. She eats small things. Can't have too all much right. on her plate. I'm going to end this segment now, all right? This segment <laughs> is now over, right? Call, call Norman Dundee. Like, like Gretchen Mole's career, this segment's over. <laughs> God bless her. R.I.P. Gretchen. <laughs> All right, so the chef is now in the middle. Uh, now he's in the kitchen, and he's like, it is the middle of the season. Now I'm tired, but revenge is my biggest motivator. And then we see a clip of him getting nagged over stuff. Like, no fish. Your kitchen is filthy. What have happened to Gretchen Mole? Gretchen Mole? Gretchen Mole? <laughs> Since I was he's kid, working on a screenplay. Of... <laughs> it's like, this will be, be a vehicle for Gretchen Mole. <laughs> Since I was a kid, a bunch of motherfucker make laughing at you because you don't know how to read. It hurt me inside. It's part of dyslexia. It makes this job more difficult. And what's a shame about it is every time I write it down, no one can understand what the hell I'm trying to say in my art. So I had to cook. And this is what you really have to love what you do. I cannot give up. I cannot give up. I just cooked that salmon backwards. Damn it! <laughs> And then we just see him uh, washing in a trash can. Lou, that revenge. That revenge is coming in strong. Like, there's such assholes on this show, the editors. You have to love what you do. Do not give up. Spraying down the inside of a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. I want uh, everyone. I uh, need uh, Ben and Fraser and Anthony. We're going to have a preference sheet meeting, or as I like to call it, Gretchen Mole. It's preferred not to be in Hollywood at this moment. <laughs> Hollywood has a preference sheet meeting and Gretchen Mole's not on it. That's what I meant to Gretchen say. Mole. Gretchen Mole is on the cannot haves. Or she's right next to gluten. She's in between gluten and dairy. All What's right. the opposite of a primary guest? That's Gretchen Mole. <laughs> 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 she ruined my friendship with my chef friend, so I'll always have a bitterness towards her. Mm. All right, now everyone worked extra hard on that last that last charter. I'm extra impressed. Now, Melinda Springer, she was a former cruise director, and Fraser's like, "Oh my god, 
He's like, well, her husband is Noah. And then uh, we've got Gary, who's a fashion executive, and his girlfriend, Jill Zarin, one of the original housewives of New York. And Ben goes, she looks like a housewife. Well, congratulations. Get, get ready for... You think that based on the girls that you're into, you think that... How... <laughs> I'm I'm flummoxed. <laughs> you're gonna. Not a I was, ben. I'm like I'm like. Hata, hata, hata. I'm turning to Shannon. Door. You don't you don't, you don't even you don't even know. You think that Camille? You think that Camille and Sonia are gonna keep looking like this for the next forty years of their life? <laughs> <laughs> and Fraser's like, I know who she is, but he says it in a way like he doesn't know who he is, and it disappoints me. And Fraser, I think Fraser <laughs> needs more gay education. Who, who's, who does that? Do you think people it's just who you? talk about Gretchen Mull? I know who she is. You don't know who she is. You don't know who she is. She was on Night you know. Court. That's you like know. what I say about Olivia Rodrigo. Like when yeah. I first heard an Olivia Rodrigo song, I was like, I know who she is. And I was like, I don't know who she is. And then I Googled her. And then it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago that I was like, oh my God, she's amazing. Because she came up on my feed and I was like, hey, lady in the computer box, who is this? And she's like, Olivia Rodrigo. And I was like, no one ever told me I would fall in love with fucking Olivia Rodrigo like I have. And now I just play her on nonstop loop. She's so edgy, Olivia Rodrigo. She, she has is. so many things to say. She's she like does. angry. She's so gonna she speak up. Sarcastically. She does. She's gonna speak up. Love her. Okay, so um, Jill Zarin's coming. No one knows who she is, which is hilarious. And then they want to play pickleball because all these guests met playing pickleball in the States. And Fraser's like, may I ask, what is pickleball? And Carrie's like, well, it's tennis for rich people, so Gretchen Moore doesn't play it. High five, anyone? No? Um, by the way, for rich people. And I not. love that this country has not been affected. This is like watching a zombie movie where they're like, oh, it's just affecting America. And they all think that they're safe until that one fucking zombie floats over yeah. on a leaf and then boom, they're all dead, but, you know? By the way, you know what's tennis for rich people? Tennis. Tennis. Yeah, tennis is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think, hey, you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing Sal Molinari uh, from the bodega go into Wimbledon? Yeah, this Sorry, is, uh, tennis is for rich people. Pickleball is tennis for people lazy people <laughs> it's for people with bad it's for tom schwartz it's for tom schwartz <laughs> yeah it's for the it's rounds of the delicate. world yeah um so uh, melinda is allergic to everything everything by but the she, way i just heard all the, i just felt all the pickle ball people get upset and guess what i'm not afraid of you because no. i know you're not going to chase me with your lazy asses okay ben go ahead continue <laughs> i'm literally I'm starting a war with the pickleballers. The pickleball, pickleballers okay i'm a team tennis <laughs> So um, Melinda, the primary, is, is allergic to everything, and she's a vegetarian who is now integrating fish, uh, but she doesn't want raw seafood, um, which is like funny because it feels like this person is very health-minded, and yet raw seafood, I feel like, is the healthiest of the seafood in my mind. I mean, if you really think that mercury is a building block that we all need. It is. <laughs> it is. Just ask Jeremy Piven. Um, Noah doesn't like meat or fish, and Josh doesn't like vegetables. You know, how do we even still have chefs in the world? I would just fucking quit at this point. I would point. just serve matzah. Just be like, everyone, here's some matzah. You get it for the next three days, and that's it. <laughs> hey, everybody, here's your bowl of yeast with some raw tuna on the inside. Fucking, in, fucking die, okay? I just, just want to watch pasta. you all fucking die. Honestly, you could probably just make pasta the whole time. Just pasta, pasta, pasta. So, oh, but then there's also someone who's gluten-free and dairy-free and egg-free and yada, yada, yada. But they also want a pina colada-inspired birthday cake. Um, and But they also want a traditional birthday cake. Because the pina colada one, I think, has to be gluten-free and egg-free and fun-free. And but the other free. one, Just don't free. eat a cake. How about just that? Just have a pina have colada. An have like, a have a colada. fucking apple. Don't make have somebody a... do that for you. That's just fucking ridiculous. And I know people have allergies and this and that. No one has all of this. This is a bunch of bullshit. This is some first world privileged bullshit. And if you really do have all of these things, then have the decency to be embarrassed and bring an apple. That's what I say. <laughs> and bring an apple. <laughs> I say just have a freaking pina colada at that point. That is dairy, and... unfortunately. Doesn't well, it? then, I mean... Probably, but I don't know. Pina colada inspired cake. I don't know. I think it's just, it's too much. So, uh, of course, Anthony is stressed and he's like, every person is different. Maybe it's not real. Oh, fuck. It's real. It's real. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
So they want to have a pickle. They also want to have like a beachside pickleball experience, which is weird to me because don't you have to bounce the ball? You can't bounce it on beach. Right? Yeah, I don't know how how I don't know what. I don't what think they've ever played it. Playing. Yeah, and they want to do a sunset yoga flow. But also, you know, Fine. they're trying to get rid of pickleball in communities. Have you read this? <laughs> like a lot of communities are fighting back because all these home house community community neighborhoods or whatever are putting pickleball courts in there and it's making the na- neighbors crazy because it sounds like like it's yeah. a it's a it's not that sounds more like tennis it's a horrible horrible sound it's like a mm. over and over and it's making people fucking crazy so of course these people want to go to someone else's beach where everybody else is trying to relax and make the most obnoxious sport sound of all time just choke on your fucking pina colada cake i can't believe <laughs> I already hate these people. I don't even know who they are. So then they want their friend is going to be teaching them the sunset flow. How's a person with sunset flow hanging out with these difficult people? It's not working. Your yoga I'm, is not working. I'm telling you that. Listen, we this is clearly a case where casting cobbled this charter together. Like there's these people are not all friends. Like you cannot tell me that Joel Zarin is friends with these people. <laughs> it does not make any sense. Yeah. We met we met playing pickleball. All right, so now it's bedtime, and then they go to bed, and then it's the morning, and we get majestic music, and it's because Dylan is working out in slow mo. <sighs> Dylan, poor Dylan, his insecurity is delicious to me. I love it. His love insecurity it. is wild. We're, uh, we'll get to it in a moment, but I knew there's a scene that's going to come up. I was like, oh, I bet Ronnie just let out a belly laugh at that scene. <laughs> I'm, so, literally, I'm literally dying watching this guy. I think he's <laughs> the best comedy on TV. He's what Los Angeles does to people. And I'm not, I'm just saying, I'm not saying he's from LA or he's to LA or whatever. Just in case people are ever wondering what that experience is, if you're not someone who works out or, or is known for a good body or good looks or whatever, and you go to LA to be in that industry, this is what you become, this kind of person. Yeah. He's just like completely crazy and he's completely mentally fucked for the rest of his life. And it's, you know, it's a study. It's a study, guys. Study up. Yeah. We saw this last season with that guy, Tony, who also was like, oh, but I have to wake up at four in the morning so I have to work out. If I don't work out, I'm sad. And he was like so whiny about it. But like Dylan somehow is even more extreme than Tony is. So, um, and then he's like, oh, I love the feeling of getting a pump. Like, that feeling is the best feeling. Like, and you get to feel so confident in yourself. High five to myself. Ha ha. It's just like truly annoying. Me. Oh, my God. And then he kind of messes up a weight as he's bragging, which was funny. Yeah. And um, then the chef is talking to himself. And he's like, I do not know what to make. I do not know. Because how can he? You know, he's completely fucked. Yeah. So then uh, we exhausted. see him slowly start to unravel as he's thinking over the list. And then we go to the mes- uh, the mess, and as Dylan comes in, he's like, oh, the protein, it's almost done. I'm scared. I'm scared. Where's the protein? <laughs> and so he's like, there's protein bars there. So he reads the back, and he's like, three grams of sugar, 14 grams protein. This is honest. This is honest <laughs> protein. <laughs> High five, protein. High five. Oh, jeez. So then we go to everyone's cleaning, and then now, like, Captain Carrie is like, Ben, Ben, Carrie, let's do a walk around, okay? Well, there's nothing left on the counter, like last time, and this part was all shitty, but it's better now. Good job, all right, there's dust, there's a mark, okay, there's a footprint, all right, pretty good. And then we start, start getting the Captain Dad jokes. Uh, he's like, all right, let's get that in the Christopher. The Christopher walking. It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's wrong and then dylan's like oh i love stairs i want cabs because they're doing provisions so he's like he's, he's like the only one who's actually happy to be carrying lugging in provisions it's like i'm t- i've said it a million times i cannot stand when they show provisions because i imagine myself being there having to bring in the provisions and you know it's hot and you're carrying boxes and it's just like endless and endless and you're so not into it and then you walk by someone and they're like just a few more i'm like i don't want your optimism right now this is what i hate doing i know i don't want people's optimism either in general i just think it's so gross it's such a gross lifestyle i mean you guys do you i'm not gonna pass i'm not gonna try and pass laws to legislate against it but it's gross so captain and fraser uh captain's like so you checked everything not the sink and there's paper in the trash can already what's up with that bro 
Well, you're looking in very fine detail today, Captain. I don't know if I need that. He's like, oh, more detail every time, mate. This was broken last trip. That's not fixed yet. Make this toilet paper better. Do better, Fraser. He's like, I'm definitely feeling a stew down. It's not the level I like to work at. (laughs) But that's also because I'm a hideous, hideous, disgusting human being. So then... (laughs) Where does Fraser's insecurity come? I forget. I don't know. He well, he just like will mutter things to, like to him. Well, he he will he just mutters really like withering things about anyone. And if he doesn't have anyone to wither about, he just withers about himself. Like he will often be like, "I'm disgusting." <laughs> so, uh, so the captain, uh, he's like, "All right, everyone, it's game time. Guest arrival in fifteen. Gretchen Moore stardom arrival. Never." <laughs> So now the song is Get out of my way and stay out of my way and get out of my way. And slow mo, the guests start coming up the dock, and we hear, <laughs> Are we ready to have a good time? Yeah, we are. Hell yeah, we are. <laughs> Can't wait to make that sound on a private beach, am I right? <laughs> Hi. So it's this group of like young people, and then like Jill and her, and her boyfriend Gary. And uh, like, hello, welcome, welcome. Here's your chief Steve Fraser. He's gonna take you on a boat tour, and I'm sure that uh, none of you will have anything to comment about. So enjoy. Oh my God! Is they go? Jill has a comment literally about every single thing. Uh, this boat is spotless. Good job. Oh, God. This is this is the hot tub. I love a hot tub. Let me put my finger in this hot tub. Ow, ow, ow. This hot tub is so hot. Can you turn it down for now? What if we come out to the hot tub and we happen to burn ourselves? I don't like that. What is this window? Look down into the bedroom. I'm not going to have that. I don't like people looking at the bottom of my, my feet. Could you put that on the sheet? I don't think I remember to put that on the feet. Can someone write that down on the sheet that I don't like my feet? Okay, feet sheet. You know, it's very lines. dangerous to have this window that goes right into the window because you get the UV rays. And if you're lying in bed, you're not going to remember to put on your suntan lotion. So is there any way to put a top over this? Because otherwise it's very dangerous. I'm just giving you some notes because I just want this to be the best yacht for you guys, you know, going forward. <laughs> and Fraser's like, and this is your entrance into the primary and here's everything you really need, the bar. <laughs> right, that was a joke. You can all laugh now. Now we all understand there are quite a few dietary restrictions. Oh, it's not me, Fraser. Don't worry, no one's going to go into anaphylactic shock or anything, okay? The worst that's going to happen is they'll blow up and float away because of the gluten, (laughs) which could be hilarious, you know? Which reminds me, do we have any strings that we can kind of tie these people to chairs with? Just in case they start to go, we'll hear the chair clinging on on a bar or something on the way out. You know, I don't know, like where I live that we have a Thanksgiving Day parade, so I'm very used to this, things inflating and floating down the street, okay? So I'm just giving you some of my experiences and want to pass it on to you so that way you know what to do. (laughs) <laughs> um, I love the way she said anaphylactic shock. There's something about Jill Zarin when she says words with lots of syllables in them. They, they just are like so amusing to me. I just remember there was one episode of Roni early on where she went to a protest at the UN uh, and it was about Iran. And there was the, the leader of Iran at that time was somebody, I forget his name. It was like, uh, like Ahmed Azad or something like that, or Ahmed Azad. And I just remember her saying, Ahmed Jen- Ahmed Akmahanajad? I remember, but I forget. I remember just and I forget hearing, at the same time. Yeah, he was like he was a he was a thing. He had the beard and everything, and like he was always in the headlines. And just hearing Jill Zarin saying his name always amused me. She's like, oh, this is Akmahanajad. <laughs> I don't know her with syllables. It's just like a thing. I can't describe it. I love when she does lots of syllables. So when she said, "Well, then no one's going to go into anaphylactic shock," I was like, yes. It's a Jill Zarin big syllable It's like word. they're playing her greatest hits for you. You're just in <laughs> ecstasy in the front row. You're like, yes, a multi-syllable word. Yes, Jill. <laughs> You're wearing a Jill Zarin shirt. <laughs> I am really standing for her today. <sighs> so the captain's uh, letting Sunny call departure. And then we get some Sunny background. Oh, oh well, God. first Melanie's like, oh, look at all this food you guys have out on the bar. That's cool. Um, So which are the gluten-free things? The nuts, Melanie. The fucking nuts, okay? <laughs> so, um, Sonny, so, so, Captain Carey's gonna have Sonny, like, have a bigger role than usual for leaving the, the dock. So, this is what launches her into her backstory, which is my parents grew me up very comfortably. And, like, I, you know, I lived outside Montreal and we had a boat, and water's definitely my safe space. Um, you know, even though I could 
die in it. But it reminds <laughs> me of literally the unsafest safe space I've ever heard of. You know what my <laughs> safe space is? Beds of knives. Love to just. <laughs> you know what my safe space is? Bare wire. <laughs> <laughs> After I've washed my hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Open charges. Okay, sorry, Ben. Go ahead. <laughs> so she says, in university, I didn't know what to do with my life. So I really tried to figure out myself in those years. And that really damaged my self-esteem. But yachting was that door that like opened up to myself. And my confidence has skyrocketed. Um, you crawled into bed and apologized to Ben when he was the one who messed up. So let's rethink that. Your confidence needs some work. Okay. <laughs> uh, so she does great. You know, and um, Dylan says, Dylan is saying things like, oh, you want me to get the ropes? Sounds Gucci. Sounds Gucci. High fives. Oh, my God. It's this fucking guy. I can't. So then I can't. Um, Dylan is now kind of mansplaining a rope technique to Sonny. He's like, this is called a cap stand. People call it a winch. A winch is on the side and a cap stand isn't on the side. Do you understand? High five. High five. Give me a high five right now. Right now. Right now. Do you need a hand with that? Do you need a hand with that? Should we hug it or high five it? What do you want to do with that rope? If you could take that rope to lunch or high five it, what would you do to it? How many calories are this rope? Just wondering. So <laughs> let's taste she... it, shall we? <laughs> oh, why did you let me taste that rope? Oh. <laughs> I mean, the good news is the rope is high protein and high in fiber. But I think it's a lot of calories. <laughs> so she's like, no, no, no. Like, no, it's fine. Like, I'm a, I'm a girl on deck and I got to prove myself. You know, it's like, no, you don't. You ain't got to prove shit, girl. High five. High five. Come on. I need to burn but three calories. Come on. High five me. <laughs> Did you know that high fiving burns calories? Yes or no? <laughs> so then um, Jill is like, oh, my God. Let me tell you something. This ice machine, not great. It's not the best. Okay. Take this ice. Dump it out. I need different ice. I need I need Jill Zarin and Heather Dubro to have a an like a, a an awful off. Like I I need them to both be on this boat and they can both complain about like ice cube sizes because because Heather Dubro also has an issue with like ice. Doesn't she have like very specific tastes about ice ice shapes? Right. Yeah. Remember when she got her gigantic ice machine? Doesn't it make like yes. huge bowl huge huge balls of ice like weapon? Weapon size ice. <laughs> yes. But Jill likes different. She likes smaller ice. So they wouldn't get along, just, which would even be I, better, you know, if they like different kinds of ice. So they were making everybody make them each their own kind of ice. I know. I, it's just we've talked about this, the Jill Zarin effect and how we both have we always have two different reactions because you are brought back to your days as like being a waiter in New York. Right. And you dealt with Jill Zarin's and it was like a monstrosity. And for me, it takes me back to being just like you know, a Jewish kid in Westchester. And like, this is just like, yeah, you heard people talk. This is just the way people communicate. And so when she says, you know, I have to tell you this ice machine, not the best ice machine. <laughs> it's just like comforting to me. It's just so funny. Cause they're so, I just feel like I, my mom doesn't talk like that, but I just feel like I was around just Jewish ladies. I don't know how, maybe it was at Hebrew school. Maybe it's just at family functions or whatever, but you're just around voices like this. And just that, the the way that, <laughs> it's not someone saying, oh God, this ice, this ice machine sucks. Uh, it's just, you know what, this ice machine, not the best ice machine. It's like these little micro Yelp reviews. Uh, right, but that, you're right that I, I am triggered because of waiting tables because I'm Southern and I'm gay. And so I'm all, no matter how I talk here, my real personality is always trying to please people, right? So, and I'm, I'm a fucking waiter. So I want to just get it right. And in the South, even if you fuck something up, if you just go, I'm sorry, people are like, no, you're great, honey. You do a good job. I mean, that's how people tell you you suck here. They literally say, bless your heart, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm used to like being validated even if it's not true. <laughs> that's just how it is. And in New York, you never get that validation. It's <laughs> always, it could be better. How was your meal? It could have been better. You know, this <laughs> yeah. was fine. Like the pizza was fine, but the, you know, the crust, it wasn't as crunchy on the outside as it could have been. It's been crunchier before, but you know, before I had it, it was crunchier on the outside, but then the cheese was kind of raw. You know what I mean? Like, I don't <laughs> know if so you're putting these directly in the center of the oven. Can I see the oven? Is there a chef here that I could talk to? You know, it was like constant. And no matter what you did, it was, even if you knew they loved it, they ate every last bite. It was never good enough. And so that's what Jill brings me yeah. back to, you know? I know. And like for me, I find it to be so amusing. Like it's so amusing. I just, I don't know where, I don't know what it is. Com I don't know why it's comforting. Because it's like, again, 
my mom and my aunts, you know, they never were, they're not like this. Like I've, they're not like fair, not the best ice machine. They're not like that at all. But I think I've just, you're just around and somehow like it has soaked into my life that when I hear like, you know, when I hear like a, a Jewish woman talking in this sort of way, which theoretically it's not a Jewish thing, it's a New York thing. Yeah, I was gonna say I've never I don't want it I don't want to make it sound like it's a That's, Jewish it, thing because people are gonna be like, Ronnie's hating on Jews. I watch yeah, no, I I, actually I never really looked should. at it like that. I just looked at it as like an older it's New a, York a lady thing, you know. It's well, a regional not lady thing. thing either. It's like an older New Yorker thing. It's just yeah, because like Ramona would do it too. A city and like thing. Yeah, so I, I I'm gonna divorce it from saying like you know I just associate it <laughs> yeah, with like you. Jewish women because of my life, but um yeah that's not I don't want to I don't want to like engender any like anti-Semitism. Yeah, no, no, I'm it's Jewish. not that. It's uh, it's but it is a, a regional York thing. thing you know? It's like a yeah. New York regional thing, Long Island, New York, and I don't know, it just cracks. But Jersey's me not like that. Up. I have to say, Jersey no, people Jersey's aren't different. like that because when they would come over the bridge or through the tunnel, whatever it was, they would never. They were like, ah, it's great. Everything's great. It's fucking great. It's fucking awesome. All right, just get out of here. <laughs> Just get out of here. Just get out of here so we can keep talking, you know? Uh, oh my God, you look so cute. Get all my hands and all my lapses. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Jill's uh, other part of her personality. So, she likes crazy eyes and she also likes Diet Cokes done a very specific way. So, she's got Barbie running up and down these stairs. So, Barbie goes to get her new ice and she's like, uh, Jill, do you like this ice more than that other ice? And she's like, um, yes. This is nugget ice. I approve of nugget ice. Okay, go tell everybody on board. Do you have the sheet? Do you have the sheet here? Will you write it on the sheet? All right, you know what? Follow me around with the sheet as I come up with things. We're gonna we're we're gonna just keep adding to that nugget ice. Okay, number one. And Barbie's like, yeah, Jill is the primary in her own head. And then we see Jill say, you know what? I don't care about anyone else. My diet cokes go in the freezer. I just, and then she and then Jill is so proud. She goes out to the other guests and goes, guess what? I. Do. <laughs> Guess, guess what? I, I don't know. This is so This cracks me up. I don't know. She's like, guess what? I just taught them how to make a Diet Coke. I just taught them how to make a good Diet Coke. It has to be, it has, cold, it has to be cold soda with nuggets. Okay. That's, that's it. Thank you, Julia Child. <laughs> she cracked the code. I don't know. She's so proud that, like, she figured out the best way to do that, do that Diet Coke, and she goes and advertises it to everyone. This She's very, gonna very be one of those benches way. with names on it in Central Park. It's like, <laughs> Jill Zarin taught the world how to make a good Diet Coke. She's gonna get a she's gonna get a Medal of Honor from the from the president. She's gonna yeah. be at the Kennedy Center Honors. <laughs> taught the world how to make good Diet Coke. <laughs> so on other parts of the boat, uh, Dylan is breaking down on the inside as he does push ups off of things. <laughs> and then Fraser and Chef are talking dinner. And uh, the chef is like, okay, I'm going to do shrimp cocktail, whole lobsters. And Fraser's like, not a good idea. They don't like scallops. They don't and... like lobster. They don't like lobster, actually. They, instead, oh. they're going to do scallops. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. And so um, he's like, oh, God, chef is overwhelmed. He's definitely losing focus. What's going on here? And the chef's like, I have tofu. I could do tofu. And he goes, okay. And then what's your old-fashioned cocktail? Is it the crudite? And he's like, um, and then I'm going to do two cake as well. Welcome to paradise here. <laughs> it's going great. Chef, you do realize you're sauteing your sneaker right now. Oh, God. It is not shellfish. <laughs> it's not lobster. <laughs> I'm feeding him rubber because it's not gluten. So <laughs> a water toy prep. So Jill's telling Fraser, so how was your trip last week? Did you have a nice group? Oh, they were nice. That's good. That's good. You know, listen, out of all of these people, all that I know is Noah and Melinda. But Melinda's father, let me tell you this. Come closer. He invented the Moderna vaccine. I'm not fucking kidding with you. Huge. His father's huge. Okay. Yeah. Don't cough around him. I'm just warning yeah. you. Don't cough around him. Okay. He'll have you injected with with uh, with monkey blood <laughs> trying to find a cure for whatever you're passing around the boat. All right. I'm just warning you right now. God, she will literally gossip about anything to anyone. <laughs> She's like, service worker, come over here. Let me tell you something. That person over there, her father invented the Moderna vaccine. And that one, that one's father is a lawyer. Yeah. Listen, Noah's Very father, person. everyone's kissing his ass. I wouldn't trust him, not because I don't trust vaccines. He doesn't like nugget ice. Okay. <laughs> don't go near him. He drinks, he drinks acicola. 
<laughs> we're trying to we're trying to change him. <laughs> so um, now the chef is making a pina colada, colada cake with tofu. Sounds delicious. Fraser is <laughs> yeah. talking to Barbie about decor, and she's freaking out because it's just they still don't have a stew. And then Jill is like, "So, uh, Captain, look at that. That's an island, right? I know what an island is. So, what? Which one is it? Because listen here, I've captained a boat myself. Okay, it wasn't a boat like this. The fastest I ever went was was uh, Newport." The farthest I ever went was Newport, but I wouldn't go to Nantucket because there's just too much openness there. Okay. Also, uh, I heard from a very good friend that they do not have nugget ice on Nantucket. So why even go? Why even go? I have <laughs> to say, Gary, not the best island. This is why Gary marries a nag because he needs one. Okay. So they're getting on water toys now and Ben goes, all right there, Gary. Now, this is the pulley through the water thing. That's what it's called. It's the technical name for this toy. Now, be careful. Keep your dick out of that hole. And then Gary gets on it and goes, oh, okay. Oh, wait. I got my dick stuck in the hole. <laughs> Gary literally just cheated on Jill Zarin with the sea bob. <laughs> with the sea bob. <laughs> uh, all right, Captain. All right. All right. Ben, Ben, Ben to the wheelhouse. Uh, how's it going, Ben? He's like, well, it's been tough. I can't do everything. I'm going to have to put more responsibility on the crew, and I can't take it. And he's like, all right, well, put more responsibility on Dylan and see if he can handle it. All right. Like, I saw him the other day. He was balancing a stack of protein bars on his nose like a seal. So I know he's got some skills in him. <laughs> uh, and then someone's asking Drew, uh, Dylan outside. Um, what his position is. He's like, I'm deckhand, but I think I'm going to be lead deckhand. Yeah, I have the same experience as Ben. So basically, I'm all, I'm already it, basically. I'm, I'm the captain. I, I could be. I will be. Will be the captain. Hold on. I'm just going to put my ankle behind my head. <laughs> oh, felt good. Felt good. Felt, felt better. We... High five. High five my own foot. Does this mean that we're setting up uh, a scene where Ben prom promotes Sonny over Dylan and then uh, Dylan is salty? Or is it going to be that Ben promote Dylan over Sonny and then Sonny Salty because Sonny is sleeping with Ben, but then the news too comes and Ben has eyes for the news too. What do you think is going to happen? What, which way is I it going to go? I do not care enough about these people. To, <laughs> All right. That. I will say if it's not that he can't, really give Sonny, he can't really give Sonny the raise because he's banging Sonny. So, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I don't saw that movie with um, that redheaded actress where she was the conductor. Moore. Tall. Tall? Tar. Tar. You mean I Fraser. saw that movie, and you know you better be careful when you're banging the help, like who you promote, because mm. it can ruin your life. Okay, yeah. and also don't bang the help. Okay, how come it's so serious in that movie? But below, has Below Deck just not had Tar yet? Have they not shown that on y'all's y'all's TVs yet? Okay, <laughs> you need to watch it. You know what? I saw all, Tar. All the people on this show. You know what? So guess what, Fraser? On the plane right over here, I saw Tar. Very good movie. Could have been better. I don't know. Why it don't they have it take better. place? Have it take place. How about this? Take take place in a restaurant. Who wants to see a symphony? That's what I say. Listen, y you're not going to be able to have a movie called Tar and then not have it not be about street paving. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like it just lifts your expectations no, I... to a different level, and it never delivers. Like I'm not here to watch somebody, you know, tell somebody else how to play a cello. You know what yeah. I mean? Like where do roads come from? That's my question to Tar. It's like having a, it's like having a movie called Violin, and you're watching a highway being built. You gotta like make sure it matches. The title always gotta match. I'm just saying this. I'm not trying to be an egg. I'm just saying this that way your next movie's better. That's all. You're welcome. <laughs> so then um, Dylan is talking about, it's like, look at this. Life is amazing. This is living. This is living. Look at that sunset. This is living. And I just love that he's trying to be so positive, but he's still spouting off uh, slogans from Weight Watchers because that's the old Weight Watchers slogan. This is living. <laughs> and uh, Vanessa Curtin or whatever her name was, Vanessa Redgrave would twirl around and go, <laughs> this is living. And she would drop her coat and twirl around and show her newly trimmed body. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> so I do remember, I remember Vanessa Redgrave was like the big Weight Watchers uh, spokeswoman and she was always wearing red. Um, so, so then the guys look at the sun and goes, wow, the sun is so big. Don't fat shame the sunset, sir. One day it'll be thinner than you. Like, oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got angry there. High five. High five. Push up. Push up. Do push. So then the best the captain... part about the sun is that it burns its own calories. It's so hot. <laughs> so then the captain is in the mess with um, Zan, uh, Zany. Zandy. What's wrong with me? 
I, I wrote Zanya. So, <laughs> Lasagna. Um, <laughs> And they're talking about coming up and down the stairs. He's like, my glutes look great. My girlfriend will be happy. And we've been going together, going all three years now. And she's like, I'm just so content in figuring out myself, you know? Like, uh, I'm trying different things. I caught myself things. outside. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm catching myself on the inside. <laughs> the important part. Well, I meditate every day. Or, uh, as they say in, in Turkish, I... Uh, let me see if it comes to me. Uh, if I remember correctly, Higin meditation yap yorin. I masturbation yap mac every day. <laughs> now, yes, that does mean masturbation, but I said it in Turkish, so it's not as problematic. Besides, Ben's fucking your something. So, let anyway. me tell you something. Darren FSL, which means breathe deeply. <laughs> so um he's she's he's like yeah i meditate and she says oh i'm on the crystals now so that's what i do and she tells us when i got divorced after i had a really good relationship you know he was the love of my life and i got hurt and the only thing that released that pain was through a healer and for someone else to love you you need to love yourself and so i decided to take a pledge of celibacy because if you don't want marriage and kids you can move along now He's like, oh, I hear that. Good for you. You know, Benny Desari to your collar. All right, catch me outside. That's what I, <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> like they were on the same Turkish page. Benny Desari to your collar. By the way, I think one thing that we missed um, in one of the weeks that we did not cover below deck was that Zandi gave us the backstory about her husband. Wasn't there some wild story that they got married and then... He left her to be with like her aunt or something like that, or no, or her, her okay, her father, her father fell in love with his mother or something. But the right. parents, the parents had an affair, That's and it right. ruined the family because they all had to choose sides between the parents, and so I guess they got divorced. So thanks, Dad. I guess the dad's <laughs> off somewhere being happy. Fucking typical. Am I right? It's so funny because um, they always do that storyline in these cutesy Hallmark or Disney movies. Like, wouldn't this be so adorable? Like, we bring our parents together, but when it happens in real life, it's like, it just shatters a family. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then Gary is like, oh, Bobby, 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 Bob is me, Gary. The, the guy with the penis stuck in the sea bob. <laughs> Has anybody found my penis yet? Okay, Bobby, do you have a dryer for Jill? She needs a dryer. And Jill's like, oh, yeah, I want to dry my hair. And there's no electric in the bathroom. Where am I supposed to dry my hair? What, what, what do you <laughs> no just electric. have wet head people on this boat? Like, is, is that just what it is? Like, is, is no every electric. theme of the night wet hair? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you need electricity on the boat. You're welcome. There's, there's, the, there's some advice for you. <laughs> hey, boat, did you hear me? You need electricity in here. That's it. That's it. Nice job on the nugget ice, though. Barbie's like, oh, there's actually a secret hidden drawer. Which, by the way, like, why do they not show that to Jill in the first place? Like, that's not intuitive that there was an outlet in the back of that. Like, you have to open up a drawer and then you have to look in there and see that there's an outlet in the back. So well, you can't I'm, show Jill because if they had shown Jill, she would have been like, "What? This is supposed to be hidden this in a drawer? The they shouldn't That's supposed that to be hidden. I could have found that by you opening the thing. It was not hidden at all. This is very badly hidden." It should an outlet goes on a wall. Everyone knows an outlet goes on a wall. Why are they putting it in here? It doesn't make sense here. It's like they didn't think. They didn't think. Did whoever built this bathroom have a guilty conscience about something? Who hides electricity? That's ridiculous. <laughs> so um, Jill's like, so then Jill's like, Bobby, come on, Bobby, come down to this bathroom. Okay, let me tell you something, Bobby. I've taken yachts before. And every bathroom is loaded with toothbrushes, toothpaste, mouthwash, band-aids, Q-tips. Has anyone ever said that before? Am I the first one to ever break this news to you? Is this like nugget ice? Am I break? Am I, am I blowing your mind right now? It's like, no, no one's ever said that, but I, I see what you're saying. And she tells us, I think this lady's annoying and she's too much. Like, you're, freeload, you're a freeloading guest who's very demanding. And this is just too much for me. I need another stew just to handle Jill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she's like, okay, listen. But you know what? You know what? We you need tums. That's what you need in here. You even need tums, okay? Because there's people who can't handle the water, whatever. That's all, okay? I'm the complainer. I'm sorry. This chocolate's on the pillow, right? 
<laughs> they're wrapped, right? Because you don't want to put like them open because they could melt. Then you have a chocolate stain on the pillow. You don't want to have that. They're wrapped. So you don't want that. Gary will go to sleep on the chocolate. He'll have chocolate on his head. I'll be licking Gary's head tomorrow. Have you found Gary's penis yet? Question. Nicole, there's, you find that? there's no penis size holes in the mattress, right? Gary has a problem. This this coming up drama. It's like coming up on below deck. My burger's cold. Oh, boom! <laughs> the most inevitable drama with Jill Zarin. <laughs> that's cold. That's cold. That's cold. Um. So <laughs> we come back. Uh, the deckies getting high on a gas tube. Were they getting high on a gas tube? What was yeah, happening? Yeah, Sunny's like, I don't know. It was like, I don't know what it was. I thought it was like gas. I don't know. But they're like, are you getting high? They're like, yeah, bro. I don't know what it was. <laughs> so Barbie is talking to Fraser and Sandy, and she's like, Jill is complaining that she's not talking with toiletries, you guys. And Sandy's like, I will make the guest gift baskets. <sighs> Catch the toiletries outside. <laughs> So then uh, now the chef is making purple cauliflower puree and mm -hmm. planting scallops and Fraser watches it. Fraser is such a drama queen. Okay. He watches this guy who, by the way, is working alone and doing an incredible job so far. Fraser yeah. is such a gaslighter. And the fact that he's going to the captain and worrying the captain about it, it's also weird and gaslighty. And I don't know what he's got against this chef, but it's so weird <laughs> because he's doing a beautiful job. And Fraser's like, <gasps> I'm worried. Purple cauliflower. He's losing his mind. Get the straight jacket. <laughs> Something must be done about this man. Yeah, he's acting like it's the wildest thing. Does he think that the that that Anthony actually used like food coloring? Does he not realize that there's actual purple cauliflower in the world? I'm not I don't sure. know. I think he's just trying to make it seem like this chef's crazy because it's giving him drama. But like. The guy's dealing with it pretty well, you know? He's like, oh my God, the chef is losing it. Have you seen his kitchen? And then they show the chef up till four in the morning and he's like, but he's still crazy. I think he's <laughs> just one of, Fraser's just one of those people you're just not gonna win, you know? Yeah. He's always gonna be trying to find someone around him to villainize. Like he tried with Barbie and she like acquiesced or whatever. And so now he's switching over. Mm. So uh, then Zandy brings like a little basket with not all the toys. Maybe that's too harsh. Sorry, go ahead. That should have been I was trying to think of a voice. different word. Different word. Um, we don't need one. You know what's a good word? Nugget. Nugget ice. <laughs> you know what's a good word? Kotu Adamalik. I mean, it's still villainized, <laughs> but it's in Turkish. Everyone, I have a big announcement to make. And it is. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, gather round. <laughs> I'm Laura E. Dietkola, yap my ye ogritim, which means, wow. of course, I taught them how to make good Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zandy brings Jill a goodie bag with toiletries and just like, ah, oh, look there, somebody's been scrambling. Good for you. Good for you. You see, I'm making a huge difference on this boat. Okay. <laughs> So um, then the chef is the chef has to make something and he has to make something oh shrimp cocked the cocktail sauce but I guess someone asked for no horseradish in their cocktail like by the way I am shocked that like the 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 preference sheet was so specific that someone wrote down no horseradish because it's so horseradish does not pop up a lot so then he decides he is going to he's using wasabi powder instead but the joke is on him because guess what almost all wasabi that we have is actually just horseradish that's dyed green. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Because actual wasabi is very difficult to grow and it's very, very expensive. And it's just easier to just <laughs> serve horseradish that's mm. green. Wow. I, I, I saw that. a whole thing about this. I read a whole thing about it. It's wild, wow. but it is true. And by the way, also, it's like, a, it's still, it's like horseradish and wasabi do taste very similar well mainly because I mean, we're probably so just having hot. Hot. we're having horseradish yeah did you say um, horseradish okay. is so fucking hot you know what could have been hotter could have been hotter i use horseradish all the time because i make shrimp, my own shrimp cocktail sauce you know there's nothing better than going to the store and getting some you know pre-boiled shrimp or whatever that's already shucked not shucked peeled and then I go home and I say, you know what? This cocktail sauce isn't good enough for me. I'm going to make my own right now within five minutes. You have your own cocktail sauce, you know? How do you make it's it? Spicy. What do you mean, how do you make it? You make it Tell with me. horseradish, lemon, garlic. Nugget ice? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Worcestershire. 
a uh, little chili. I, I usually use a little of the uh, Korean uh, chili. What's that called? Flake. You know, go, everyone uses it. Garu or the go, uh, gochujang? Uh, no, no. Maybe it's not Korean. You know, the red one that everybody loves. It's Korean. Sriracha. Um, sriracha, yeah. Sriracha and then uh, some ketchup. Good old-fashioned ketchup, you know. And then, boom, shake it up. It's better if you let it sit all night, but who's got time for that? Not me. I'll tell you why. Um, you know why? Because I was searching for electricity and it was hidden in a drawer. That's why. Everyone, everyone. Ronnie just taught you how to make good good cocktail sauce. He just taught it. It's amazing. Good cocktail sauce. Call it Ronnie sauce, all right? <laughs> because that's, that's what it is. I, uh, I, I want to say this about horseradish. Make, I just taught him how to make diet cocktail sauce. <laughs> I just taught them. I just taught them how to make good diet coke. Mega nice. Uh, by the way, horseradish. I love horseradish. And um, this is, I'm just, since we're talking about horseradish, I just want to share this. I want to teach you guys how to make good horseradish uh, in the sense that uh, like two weeks ago, I went to a dinner party and my friend Sylvia, um, made some horseradish infused vodka. And I'm telling you, it was so divine. It was so wonderful. She basically like pureed up some horseradish, like the root and put it into the vodka for like three days. And I think added a little bit of sugar. You could just like sip that vodka. It was fantastic. So well, that's my little go. pro tip. That's, that's how you make good vodka. I just taught everyone how to make good vodka. I told everyone. <laughs> Um, so Captain is texting Yacht Services uh, about a new stew. Have we got anything? Captain, we don't. Oh, I don't know what to tell you. It's busy season. Now, listen, <laughs> last time it was this busy, the boat was overrun by kangaroos. I punched one right in the goddamn face, and I said, you come on this boat, you're not doing it without a squeegee in your hand. And that was the first time I had a boat that was cleaned by kangaroos. <laughs> Okay, Gary, Gary. Okay, put this moisturizer in your head, Gary. Don't be greasy, God. Look at this. Okay, can, guys, I just I just taught Gary how to do good moisturizer. Because he knows she him. got free stuff. So now she's like, oh, look at all this basket of toiletries. Gary, use them. Let's see Let's see if anything's going to make you break out before I use them. <laughs> it's like the human rat. Gary, put why do you have a sea head, bob Gary? in your not, pants? Not in a greasy way, Gary. In a less greasy way. Oh, God, Gary. Gary, do we have Gary's penis yet? <laughs> So um, now Jill's trying to be fun. She's like, okay, everyone, let's conga line through the boat. Let's ha let's conga line, okay? So they go, and then they're like, they sit around. It's, it's dinner time, and um, they, you know, Fraser serves some fish, but not to not to Jen. She just has a bowl of sad vegetables and everything. And Jill's like, okay, everyone, I, you know what? I love the presentation of the food, I mean, but I need a small plate of, you know, that's, you know, I need a plate of, of Tums. <laughs> This would yeah. be too much for me to digest right now. What are you, monsters? <laughs> what are you, monsters? I need Tums. <laughs> All right. Who serves food without sides of Tums? Okay. Oh, by the way, Frasia, what's the proper way to eat the shrimp? <laughs> like, what would you say? All right. Because we're having a discussion at the table. And he's like, well, I don't personally like to touch my food, but most people I know would do exactly what you're doing. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess I'm just a toucher. Okay. <laughs> Can we get some tums and just sprinkle, just crush them up and sprinkle them into the tomato sauce? I think it would just make it much better. So the chef is talking about how he loves scallops. I, they melt in your mouth, scallop. But someone is vegan. I want her to feel all the other guests feeling. So I just take a tofu and they cook it like all other scallop. She will feel like, oh, I'm at the same party with scallop. She doesn't want to be in the same party. Okay. That's why she's <laughs> refusing to eat what everybody else eats. Okay. Give her a, give her a Diet Coke. That's what I say. <laughs> so then um, upstairs, they're just now they're eating the scallops. Everyone's very happy. Um, Gary is like, oh, this carrot, this carrot's amazing. Yeah, well, you're going to have to use it down there because yours is lost in the sea right now, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so one of their friends has a ponytail and Gary's like, hey, man pony, you want me to tell you who you look, who you look like? A Jewish warlock. That's what you look like. Oh, you know what? Spoken like a true grease ball. I told him not to put too much of that on his head. Gary, you're blinding the warlock with your head. Okay? Put your napkin on top of your head. It's distracting, Gary. You know, Gary, the implication of what you're saying is that warlocks are inherently not Jewish. Okay? <laughs> I thought that was a little rude. <laughs> It's a little <laughs> presumptuous, Gary. It's presumptuous. So, um, succession music is playing for some reason. I'm not really sure because they're just <laughs> making scallops. And then the succession um, music is very much Jill Zarin. Da da ba b ga re a li bethany echamera jazan. 
anaphylactic. What you really need is nugget eyes. Nugget eyes, not block eyes. Who does not have Tums? In that bathroom, you need Tums. I just taught them how <laughs> to make good diet. Gary has Gold. some lotion for him. It was free and didn't pay for. I had him put it on his head. Now he looks like a grease ball. Oh my God. Gary, why'd you put so much grease on your head? You look like a ridiculous person. That is a Jewish <laughs> warlock. warlock. I love Jewish warlocks. I never knew warlocks were not Jewish, but now I do get over here. Man fun and give me a hug. Wow, that succession. Malin. That's really that's, a, that's really a banger. Were you do, were you you were doing the piano part, huh? Yeah. But there. Nah. You're just Back. sticking to the song. Dun. I'm doing that part. Dun. You're doing the you're doing the lead part. I'm doing the bon. Dun. 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 <laughs> okay. So He's making the chef is making a vegan pina colada flan. How do you make flan without eggs? I don't believe any of this is real. I just don't believe it. I'm a flan maker. You don't make flan without eggs. How? 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 That's see, it's not so hard to turn into Jill to into Jill Zarin. You gotta make a flan without tums. eggs. I don't I need know. tums after watching this show. It's An probably just a flan. block of tofu. He probably put some caramel sauce on a block of tofu and said, yeah. Here, have it. So now the cakes are served, and Jill's like, this was made lo with love. We can tell. We can tell. There was a compliment, everybody. You're welcome. You know what tastes better than cake? A compliment from me. Chew on that for a while. All right, kids? This, there was a lot of love here. I could, I could tell that this cake got part of it sucked into a sea bob. <laughs> there was a lot of love. So uh, now Fraser is celebrating the chef in the diary room, in the confessional or whatever. Um, I'm like, you're trying to ruin his life uh, on the outskirts of this, you faker. So then Jill is like, oh, God, listen, we've been sitting two and a half hours. I got to get up now. This is ridiculous. So they go to bed and uh, Barbie is exhausted by Jill, but she has to mm -hmm. stay up and vacuum. And then, uh, it's by the breakfast. way, I love the irony that Barbie is just like stuck with Jill and being like ground down to a pulp by Jill. Because the truth is, we all know that Jill is Barbie's trajectory. Like that will be Barbie in thirty years, you know. So she should experience it now. Well, I will Get tell them. you what: I will not be surprised. That's for damn sure. Right? Like yeah. that's what Barbie is going to be in thirty years. She's going to be like, could be better. You know, could be we better. know. You know what? You know what my father did? He invented Coca-Cola. Who's that? <laughs> he invented the Coca-Cola vaccine. <laughs> baby me. Baby me. I want to tell you something. Tell your father that I can teach him how to make good Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now it's gluten-free French toast. Time for breakfast. And um, someone asks if they have hot sauce. And Jennifer is like, I have chili oil in my stateroom. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, Jennifer, because you fucking had a pina colada tofu. <laughs> I hope you didn't too. check your it's bag you because of that. What? I said, I hope you didn't check your bag because of the chili oil. Could you imagine? She is so insistent that she brings chili oil that she probably had to check her bag for it. I would have been so pissed if I was her flying partner. <laughs> they all probably had to wait for her. So Jill's like, oh, my God, you know what? There's no chili sauce, and it's such a big boat. They can't be here all the time. I get it. But sometimes if you need hot sauce and you have a hot plate of food, you, you can't wait five minutes because then your food's going to be cold. So it's like, do you even ask for the chili sauce? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> if, if I could ask for it, but it's going to take five minutes, then I don't want to hurt your feelings while you're running up and down the stairs. And then by the time you get back, my eggs are cold. You know, <laughs> who wins here? Let me tell you, nobody. Nobody wins. Because let me tell you something. Hot sauce is hot, but it's not going to make cold eggs warm. So then then the guy's like, yeah, and I want a drink, and no one's around. So then Fraser, like, arrives, because he's probably been gone for about 30 seconds total. Like, well, okay, they were you know, running all their food, which all has to be different, which requires more, <laughs> exactly. more platings, et cetera. So. Okay, you know what, uh, Fraser, can I give you another recommendation for the yacht? Okay, so I have this on my mind. A button for the primary. It's like a doorbell. Except, and I used to have it. I used to have a doorbell that would be in the kitchen. I actually just carry a doorbell and I'm just attached to whatever wall I'm near and I just ring it and see what happens. It was great. You know what? Even if you're shopping in a Target, go up to the customer service lady, put a doorbell on her head, and when you need something, just smack her in the head. 
Someone will come help you. That's it. That's what you have to do. You know, you get them off of Amazon. It's very easy, <laughs> Frasier. And he goes, oh, a doorbell in your kitchen. I bet they loved you, darling. <laughs> She's like, they did. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Isn't that dong. great? Ding dong. <laughs> He goes, okay, well, we'll always have a crew member around. She goes, you know what? But there isn't. Let's be honest. There's usually, there's not, okay? But these doorbells, they're sticky. You buy them on Amazon. Stick them somewhere. Stick them on the the table. (laughs) Stick them on Bobby. You know what? I would say stick them on Gary's head, but it's too greasy right now. So go over there. That vegan lady with the chili oil in her room, just put it on her. She's never (laughs) eating anyway. If I need something, I'll just poke her in the head. Fraser's was like, Jill is just crawling into my brain and eating my soul. I don't think he liked the doorbell idea. I don't think he liked it. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, lean closer. You got something in your face. Hold on. Lean closer. Lean closer. Ow. Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> Congratulations. There's a doorbell on you now. poking me. <laughs> I applied a doorbell onto your face. So Fraser um, runs to the captain. He's like, you will not believe this. She wants to put a doorbell on my face. <laughs> And now they're playing White Lotus music. What the hell? <laughs> well, ding, they're dong, just going... ding dong, <laughs> ding like... dong. <laughs> ding dong. Ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> just going through all of HBO's greatest hits. Next, it's just going <laughs> to be ding dong, da da ding dong, da da ding dong, da da ding dong. Ding dong, da ding dong, da ding dong, Ali Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now they're patching, packing for the beach picnic, getting ready to do that. And Dylan comes into the mess, and Kyle's eating with his hands. And Dylan's like, high five, bro, high five. And he's like, I'm eating, bro. And he's like, high five, I said, high five. So he high fives him. High five me. And then he's like, Jesus, Ben comes in and Kyle's like, Jesus, my hands are covered in shit. And that man just forced me into a, into a handshake. <laughs> yeah. And, and Kyle tells us, I mean, Dylan's good lad, but I think I've high fived him more than anyone in my entire life. Mm-hmm. And he's so mad. It's kind of funny because normally it's the person who high fives someone who has messy hands. It's the person with the clean hands that gets mad. But in this case, Kyle's like, I don't want to. I'm eating. I don't want to get your hand stuff into my gunk that I'm about to lick off my fingers. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting. Um, and Fraser is now talking to Barbie, and he's like, I don't know what to do about this picnic. Surely the chef will mess it up with his psychosis, his utter psychosis. And Purple Barbie's cauliflower. Like, <laughs> Say it again. Purple cauliflower. Could you believe it? <laughs> Purple cauliflower. <laughs> it's a sign everybody understands. So Barbie's like, just take Sandy. I mean, I would. It would be nice to go out. You know what I mean? Because like, I haven't been out in a minute. But I mean, I guess take her. And he's like, oh god, there's no way you can do it. I need you at the table. Simply, no one else understands forks the way you do. <laughs> and you're also very dumb. And I don't trust you around Sandy things. Like, okay. Mm. So then, oh my Dylan's god! Doing... I hope Dylan finds a. Oh, Dylan's working out. Thank God, he's doing some pull-ups off of something. Thank God. So then, Jill and Melinda are laying out, and Barbie passes by. So Jill's like, uh, "Barbie, okay, I want to ask you something. Food, not the service, the food. I know I said on the request sheet I wanted food out all day. Can we get some food out all day?" And Barbie's like, "Um, yeah, we'll make sure there's always snacks in the bar for you. Thank you. By the way, I don't think that's unreasonable. I think that if you're on a super yacht, there should always be snacks on the on the bar." Um, I mean, yeah, I think that's a, that one. I give that one to Jill. Doorbell unreasonable, snacks reasonable. Always I mean, have snacks. Like maybe some nuts or something. Yeah, but some you candies. know, three meals a day. Plus, you want me to keep up with all of your different An kinds airline of snacks because you have it. to remember this is not just snacks. This is vegan, gluten free, no, no raw fish, no shellfish, no dairy. No, you have to have something different for each of the fucking. I think you put out potato. You know? I, you know, like, you know, on airlines, they sometimes will, like, they'll just put their, they'll go through their, like, snacks, and then they put the basket, like, in the back, and if you get, if you're hungry, you just go up and you get a, a snack. I think yeah. that's what it should be like. See, mm-hmm. now I'm turning to Jill's Aaron. Let me give you some, let me give you some advice. This is what you do. You put out a basket, you put some chips in it, you put some gluten-free chips, you put some gluten chips, you put a little bit of everything for everyone, some Tums, you have it right there, and you're fine. Just letting you know for well, the next Well, if that's charter. what it is, then that's fine. If it's a basket. But, uh, you yeah. know, on a super yacht, I think they want more than a basket, to which I say, go fuck yourselves, all of you. All of you have pushed <laughs> me too far already. Well, you know what? So, that's why I have to be pushy, because you'll be satisfied. 
Yeah, That's you know what? what? Says. I'm a little pushy, but guess what? Who's satisfied? Everybody here. Ding dong. <laughs> this is funny. Watch her run. Watch her run. So good. So then um, Ben radios Dylan to bring the tender around. Dylan's like, let's do it. I'm like, oh, my God. He's like slapping, high-fiving a fish in the water. Ben's like, he's so good, puppy. You always have to throw the bowl for him. So I think that's the best way, by the way, to describe Dylan. So then um, the chef is plating lunch, and he's got all these well, he's different kinds of things he has to make, all these different cheeseburgers. And so Barbie's working with him. He, she's the waiter. So he's like, well, all right. I, I have to say, so the uh, options here that he's going to give are a regular cheeseburger, and then there's like a gluten-free bun, a regular bun, and then a lettuce wrap, and then some have cheese, some don't have. But like there's just variations. So Barbie goes up there, and she takes everyone's order, and I'm like, is she not going to write any of this down? Well, they all give their different you know, variations on the cheeseburger. I was like, this is not right. You have to write it down. And sure enough, she fucks it all up. Oh, doesn't she write it down? No. She comes downstairs and she starts writing it on the whiteboard. Oh, because I, I thought she said, do you have a pen or something when he was saying all the different options? But maybe he didn't. Maybe I missed it. <laughs> maybe he didn't have a pen. Or but, maybe um, I didn't see her writing something down. It seems down. like it shouldn't be that hard because it's cheeseburgers. But it is hard because there's a million things. Now, on the other hand, he has a list. You have two gluten-free people. You have one person who doesn't have this. Like, he kind of has a list. So I wouldn't even give them the option. I would say, here's the gluten-free ones here's the completely bread free one and here's the vegan one because she goes up and gives them options and then they all fuck it up because they're like oh you know what maybe i'll try gluten free that would yeah. be a fun experiment so have him make three gluten free well now he's fucked because he wasn't prepared to so now it's just it becomes a cluster basically she writes it down in a disorganized way on the whiteboard and on top of that she also messes up and he is he has dyslexia and so it's just like overwhelming and he can't process and he just gets lost yeah because she writes literal paragraphs on this board so he's staring yeah. at like this big jumble of words and he's like oh my god so he starts sweating and then he you see him just kind of shut down where he's like "Uh oh <laughs> you just see him just like start playing elevator music in his mind and going yeah. through the paces he does not... to just get through it right yeah he's like uh, uh i don't know i don't know so of course, it gets all messed up. And so uh, Barbie, um, Barbie, of course, brings the wrong thing upstairs. And they wanted a lettuce wrap. There was no lettuce wrap. And she was like, you know what? It's fine. If he doesn't have it, I'll do, you know, I'll do something else. It's, you know, th but this is not good. I mean, look, I'm not going to go into anaphylactic shock, but I am going to go into hunger shock. Okay, can I ring? Hold on. Does this, does this burger have a doorbell on it? Can I ring this doorbell? Can I ring this burger? No? Let me tell you who they wouldn't serve the wrong burger to. Akhmadinejad. <laughs> All right. I'm not even kidding with that. I know him. I know him. So, you know, so she goes down. She's like, oh, my gosh. Uh, so Jill goes, OK, my burger's cold. Gary, 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 is your burger? Gary's co burger's cold, too. Anyone else? Tell the truth now. Tell the truth. Tell them. They don't mind. They don't mind. Be honest. <laughs> you know what waiters love? Honesty. OK. <laughs> There's a moment of truth. Who's OK, no? Cold, 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 lukewarm. OK. You got two Your hair could be warm. moisturized. Okay. <laughs> any any other truths to give her? She's here. She's here. Ding dong. Ding other dong. Tums. Ding dong. You look better in, in knee highs. Okay. Tell them. Anyway. It's fine. She needs to know. They need to know. They need, this is how they improve. <laughs> they like it. So <laughs> then uh, Zandy takes the burgers down to switch them out. So meanwhile, Fraser and Sunny are at the beach. And um, Fraser is asking about the relationship with Ben. And he's like, do you have feelings for Ben? Oh, brilliant, wonderful. And she's like, um, yeah, but you know who thinks otherwise? Sabrina. Like, oh, oh God, you're really going to try and make Sabrina happen? You're not no. interesting enough as Sunny. You can't make <laughs> Sabrina happen. Make Sunny happen first, okay? Let's get an original personality before we add another personality. Also, if you're going to have an alter ego, why do you not name your alter ego Stormy? If you're Sunny, why not have Sunny and Stormy? Like, it just makes sense. At least make it a good alter ego. Because I think so, she thinks she's being cute with the witch, right? Like Sabrina the Teenage Witch or whatever. I don't I'm know. I'm guessing. Because who picks Sabrina as the name for their witch? Yeah. I mean, they're inner. Yeah, I don't know. It's I don't weird. Know. I don't know what it is. Sunny bugs me because of her like for Ben. I'm over it. Yeah. So. Uh, <gasps> oh, then... my God. Look what I just got. What? You know what I love more than anything in the world? To be Let's flirted with Coke. by spam bots. Look Did at this hot Coke? lady who's flirting with me. Do you see her? Oh, wow. Look at her. She's gorgeous. She said, hey there, how have you been? I'm going to say, 
I've been great. I've really missed you. You look so beautiful as always. What's been going on over there? Question mark. Why did you stop calling me? Okay. Um, my the spam that I get these days is time is running out, Ben, and this is the most urgent moment. We need you to donate to Joseph Biden. <laughs> like, okay, relax. I already donated. I get those from Planned Parenthood all the time. Every time, everything. It's like. The time is now. You must vote for Joni Jeremond for school council. I'm like, I don't fucking care who's on the school council. <laughs> okay, so um, now she's talking about Sabrina, her inner demon or whatever. And um, he's like, so is this Sabrina? Is she always around? Does she like purple cauliflower? Tell me the truth. And she's like, <laughs> oh, no, just tequila. And he goes, oh, so she's your ugly stepsister, is she? That was rude. <laughs> An ugly shame Sabrina. Like now you got me standing up for Sabrina, dude. <laughs> She's like, it's still like physically it's the same person as me. So <laughs> just like I cannot believe you just called me ugly. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Where's the food? <laughs> you know, you know what they should have done? A buffet. A buffet. You know what they're gonna hate me. They're gonna hate me. But I don't care. Make it better. Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> ding. Dong. Ding. Dong. Ding. Dong. Did it eat ding 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 dong? Uh, so Zandy goes to the galley and um, she's like, what is going on here? And he's like, I don't uh, I don't know. It is so hard to understand everything. Look at this board. And she's like, well, Captain is going to Captain. There's going to be complaints about lunch because the menu wasn't converted properly. And so Barbie comes in because Zandy's yeah. totally throwing her under the bus. And Barbie's like, yeah, I ran everything extremely disorganized and it came out. It was a disaster. I'm sorry. I take responsibility. He's like, should I talk to him? Listen. I'm going to solve everything in this episode by marching up there and doing nothing, as we're going to see soon. <laughs> I know. So Jill's like, you know what? My instinct was not to be surprised and to know all the meals in advance, because then I would, could make adjustments and then make it better, you know? And so Captain comes up and goes, so, uh, there's you've eaten. How was it? All right. Good job. All right. Guess what? I uh, just heard about this thing about nugget ice and it makes really good diet cakes. So I'm gonna go downstairs and give it a try. But I solved everything. Oh, I solved everything down there. <laughs> um, the, the captain really shouldn't be bothered with this. Oh, the captain, come here. You've got something on your forehead. Ow! Ding dong. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, go. Nugget bizu seviorum. I love nugget ice. Okay, I got a response from this lady. Sorry, I've been too busy and we need to know each other better before we make a call. Do you still remember, right, Zach? Yes, of course I remember. I wouldn't forget. When do you want to call? Wait, did you no, you should say, I, I wouldn't. Of course I would never forget when we robbed that bank together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to see if I can get her on the phone. Yeah. Or them on the phone. Her on the phone. I don't know. Yes, of course I remember. I wouldn't forget. When do you want to call? Oh, my God. I, I think it's going to be a thing. Right now. I feel like it's going to be something where like you get tricked into like, making a call to like a number that charges you $45 or something like that. Oh, I'll pay it to talk to her. <laughs> That's a write off. Like it's love. happening on the podcast. <laughs> I'm literally in love. Okay. So... Ask her what she thinks about nugget ice. How to, or ask her what's the best way to make a good diet Coke. <laughs> so, so sorry to bother you. I just want to make sure that you're my friend Zach or not. May I know your last name? Pringle. I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing why are they are you're supposed to say oh i'm so sorry i'm not that person and then they say well should we speak anyway is that what you're supposed to do because this is where i lose them all the time i pretend that i do remember them i don't know what the next step is supposed they to stop be. talking to me i think i'm the only person to get spammers to stop talking well to i me. think that if you say my last name is pringle we know that pringle is a is a viable last name because of bravo but uh she may think She's like, oh, he's fucking with me. I love when spammers get upset when you fuck with them. But they return. know I'm fucking with them because she's spam she's scamming me. So <laughs> I don't know. Uh, whatever. I'm my. I don't have as much of a boner. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you that it's made me think too much. They need to work on their grift a little bit more. Ding I'm dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Scammed. Okay, so Kyle is eating chips and he's watching Dylan wash <laughs> ham. In this the is the scene. Sheets of ham. Cut, like he has little ham from like Oscar Mayer or whatever you get in Grenada, and he has two slices that he's rinsing 
under the water. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, maybe he wants to reduce some of the sodium. I don't know, like, because you do wash things like anchovies, but ham isn't stored in like salty oil. So Kyle's like, why are you washing that ham? And he's like, he's like, are you washing that ham? He's like, yes. It's like, what the fuck? I always wash it because there's fat residue. I just want, I just want protein. I don't want the fat residue from the ham. You're eating a pig. Girl. You fucking moron. Are you Girl, fucking crazy? if you think you... that's going to be the thing that makes or breaks your, your diet is like the 0. 0.000001 grams of fat that may or may not be on the edge of that ham. Sir, you, you, have, you have actually need a problem. To check yourself in somewhere. I just wish like I, I was on that boat so I could be like, oh my God, Dylan, you look great. So I love that you're deciding to gain a little weight and your butt section looks so good on you. Good for you. I, it's actually alarming. It, it actually is. It, it really does appear like an eating disorder at this point. I don't think they're called eating disorders when they're for when they're people working out too much. <laughs> they're called. I think it's people look fondly. People look. Um, people Hollywood respect that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if he was washing peanut M and M's off in a sink, then people would be like eating disorder. I mean, been there. Am I right? But um, <laughs> when it's when it's Dylan. It's Ham considered bath. winning somehow. Yeah, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of terrifying. So then um, Jill's like, "Okay, you know what? I should talk to the chef. When should I do it? Should I talk to him now? Get Melinda. Get get Melinda. She's the primary. You know what? I'm gonna <laughs> let Melinda talk, and uh, sh I'm just gonna sit there and watch Melinda talk to the chef. Get him up here. Get him up here. <laughs> ding dong. Ding dong. <laughs> Melinda's a little quiet these days because she maybe you know you know she's she is a pincushion for her father essentially. She tries out all the vaccines, so." <laughs> So, um, so then Captain and, and Melinda hasn't um, and been the same since she was injected with the avian bird flu, but you know what? It did save <laughs> thousands of people, R right? Melinda, Melinda, you're walking backwards. Melinda, <laughs> ding dong, Melinda. Melinda's very, she's, uh, she's non raw fish curious at the moment. So if we give her a moment, <laughs> One of the side effects of, of Moderna is you want to experiment with fish, but it's got to be cooked. Oh, so Mullen. So they, <laughs> they, they go. So Anthony and, and captain go to meet with Jill and Melinda to just discuss the menu. Captain's he's there. Like, oh, I'm going to be there. If they're going to talk to you, oh, I'm going to be there as well. I was like, okay. So here he comes marching up again. Let's see what difference this makes. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Melinda, I'm going to have to be your mommy right now. Okay, here we go. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, you guys all enjoying your really good diet cokes you've been having since I taught you how to make them. Okay, good. I, I'm glad to hear that. I said, yeah, well, I'd love to talk about that. Uh, uh, chef, would you say something? Yes, I would love to talk about dinner. She's like, okay, so here's what I would love. I would love to hear what you're planning because I don't want to sign me what you're doing. I was wondering this. Can I add a doorbell to your stock pot? <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm planning on curry and the vegetarian, oh, the vegan option would be tofu pad thai. And she goes, oh, you know what? Pad thai? Could you do chicken pad thai? I have chicken, <laughs> but could you make it vegan pick chicken pad thai? And Not I want actual chicken. chicken. I just want, I want the chicken to have been a vegan. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> Melinda does not eat raw chicken. In fact, none of us do. So could you make sure there's not raw chicken? Thank you very much. Melinda doesn't want a meat eating chicken. So if it's possible to get me a vegan chicken, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> um, is it possible to have sushi at the bar for when we come down? Could we just get like some sushi up there? He's like, oh, uh, absolutely. absolutely. I can do uh, tuna and uh, wahoo fish. She's like, great. And you know what? If Do you have crudite? Yes, the vegetables. Okay, I would love that. I don't eat sushi. The sushi is disgusting. But I, I need something to pick at, you know, besides you. <laughs> That's not human. That would be great. Yeah. So, uh, what? Just to, to reiterate, I'd like to make a demand that you put out food for other people, but not for me. And I just want to have some little carrots on the side. So make sure the food for the other people only caters to my taste, though, <laughs> not to their taste. Thanks. I'm so glad I let Melinda say all that. Okay. And so he's like, uh, I think the primary is okay with her friend taking over the boat. She's like, Captain, taking over the ship. And the <laughs> captain's like, Glad I was here for this. And then he walks off. <laughs> <laughs> so then the guests take the tender to the beach and it's Pickleball Beach. And uh, he's like, oh, I've missed you so much, guests. Biggest lie I've ever told. Well, actually, that's not true. Today I saw the chef and I said, you look completely non-psychotic today, chef. <laughs> and I did, then I added, purple cauliflower, a normal person's brassicas. <laughs> so Ben's like, well, I've played a little tennis over the years with a couple of Grand Slam champions, if I don't say so myself. 
And then we see flashbacks of him playing with Gigi Fernandez, who's like, fuck you, I just beat you, poor boy. <laughs> so then Barbie calls her friend Brittany, because of course Barbie and Brittany are going to be friends. I think even if they have nothing in common, just their names. Like, oh my God, your name is Brittany? My name is Barbie. We have to be friends. <laughs> Do you know about good Diet Coke? So she's like... I fucking hate this housewife so much. And then, like, the second stew, who isn't, like, a second stew at all, couldn't even handle the situation. She was, like, completely frazzled. Meanwhile, like, okay. Zandy is so calm. She just sits there with that, like, sort of pleasant smile on her face. Like, like she, you know, she has a I hate you smile at all times. And Barbie is, like, running around so frantically, the cameraman cannot pick catch. Like, ca- catch her outside. There's one, po- one point where Barbie comes running down the hallway and then she turns around and goes up a staircase, and the camera cannot track her. It's like watching a football game where the camera can't follow the football. She's <laughs> the one who's frantic. I know, but you know that whole like making yourself the hero of the story thing, and we all yeah. do it. But man, Barbie really takes it to a t- to a different level. She's like, basically, I hate this fucking boat. It was like sinking, so like I was basically the the life raft. Like I'm the only one who knows how to swim. So like I literally saved everybody while I held a screwdriver and bolted the boat back together and then put everybody back. I mean, we're a live thing. I'm in the news here. Do you get the news here? Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm in it. It's nuts. Is that okay? He hasn't called me back. He's still <laughs> extremely wealthy, right? Okay. Tell him I haven't drank a Pepsi. Okay. Talk to you later, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Zandy tells Fraser on the beach that Barbie got all the or- orders wrong. And Fraser's like, perfect, absolutely perfect. And um, yeah, they're just like, they're on the beach setting up and everything. And so Fraser goes up to Jill and he's like, I just want to apologize, Jill. And if you do want to stick a doorbell on my forehead, I will accept it now. She's like, no, don't be sorry. But if you're there, you know, and you're anticipating service and half the food comes out and the other half doesn't come out, what are you supposed to do? You know, I told everyone, be honest. Is it cold? Is it cold? Is it cold? We got we had three lukewarms there. That's all I'm saying. You know what? Mine comes out cold. His comes out cold. And that's when we knew something's wrong. Now, I don't know what it is, but something happened. Did it not? Did it not happen? Did something bad not happen, Frasia? Tell me the truth, Frasia. Okay? I like the truth. And he's like, I heard the order was taken wrong just there all right so no big deal now i know you know what <laughs> and now you know you do it once and she'll never do that again ding dong ding dong am i right put a ding dong that's all i'm saying <laughs> jill just wants to know the backstory she just wants to know all the gossip you know and i'm like that too i'll go onto a plane and i'll see like two people having an issue like i'll see like someone trying to put like a bag in an overhead compartment it doesn't fit and then like the stew is like talking to the person about the bag and i can't hear them but i know they're having discussion and i'm like what, what are they saying? Where are they going to have to put their bag? They have to put it in the back. They have to put it in the back. They have to check it. Like, and then they check it. I'm like, I knew it. They had to check it. They had to check it. They had to check it. I get way too involved in this stupid shit. And Jill does the exact same thing. She's just verbal about it. I keep it on the inside. And she thinks she's always solved a mystery. You know, like, oh, you know what? The food didn't come out. Let me guess. There was a problem. I knew it. I knew there was a problem. Yeah, there was a problem. The food didn't come out. What the? Of course, Gary, there was. Did you didn't you just solve did anything. Gary, Gary, did you hear? She got the order wrong. That's why it happened. I told That's you. why. I That's told why. you. I told I everyone told you. here. I you know it. what I said to Melinda? They got something wrong. And Melinda just looked at me like with a stupid face and didn't say anything. And I said, don't say anything, Melinda. And she didn't. And I said, you know what? I told you not to and you didn't. Good for you. Things yeah. are wrong. You win. You know? And you know what? You know what? It's like the time I said to Melinda, I said, I think something's wrong with your vaccine. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, the needle's still in your arm. You've got it three days ago. You got to get that checked out. She got it out. I was right. They left the needle in there. But that's all. I just needed to know. They just have to fix it. <laughs> Okay, so now Barbie is running all over the boat, and she's like, this situation is fucked. And then it cuts back and forth (laughs) between her in a frantic mode and then the guest going through their guided meditation that Jen, the fucking chili oil in her purse lady, is guiding them through. And um, send yourself grace. Send yourself courage. Send yourself grace. And courage. Always keep keep chili oil in your purse, guys, okay? And then Custo Barbie, like, fuck you guys for making me do this myself. Fuck you guys. Um, you know what? Like again, most boats that we've seen on the show, there's three stews, and this is pretty normal. So um uh she's Barbie's really mad because yeah, they're do- you know, Zandy and Fraser out there are doing yoga, but they're not doing just yoga. They're also serving they're they're the ones who have to deal with this like high maintenance crew. So then now the guests are ready to go back and um, Dylan is trying to trying to get like energy. He's doing like a pep talk in front of a mirror. It's like, come on, come on, 
Come on, man. You can do it. High five. High five yourself. High five. He slaps himself. He's like, ow. <laughs> slaps himself on the face. This guy's crazy. So then Fraser and Barbie. Uh, Barbie's like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't know she wasn't coming back from the beach. I mean, I knew she was going to the beach. I didn't know she was staying there. Because, like, I was running around at every single guest room. But, like, then I fucked that up. And, like, I fucked lunch up. You know what I mean? Like, I know that I did. And he's like, well, as long as you don't do it again, we're still going. We're still our lives. And <laughs> we'll just go until we kill ourselves, I suppose. <laughs> so Zandy's, like, steaming in the in the like steaming clothing and barbara's like um please tell me we have a napkin and she's like no no well who did it while i was gone there are no napkins around because well um like i need a napkin and and zandy's like well i know we don't have people is what i'm saying and so you can you can iron a napkin i'm pretty sure and so barbie's like all mad that she has to actually press a small square of fabric yeah and um you know you got to do it. And she's like, am I supposed to be everybody's nanny on the boat? Why don't you? Am I your personal assistant? You can iron. You can iron yourself. Cash me out napkin side, princess. <laughs> so then uh, Fraser is taking up a huge plate of sushi to the bar. Now, this is a massive amount of work. Okay. Sushi is not easy to make. This is a massive serving thing of sushi. Right. And the crudite. So Melinda goes, are there any without fish? It's raw fish, and she's pissed, and she's telling her husband, Melinda, fuck you, dude. You were sitting there coming up with this menu, and you didn't yes. think to say, I don't eat any of that stuff. Say what you want, Melinda. Okay. I know. She literally said nothing. That Literally, <sighs> Jill Zarin said, put out some tuna and some this and wahoo. Put up tuna and wahoo sushi, and, or he says tuna and wahoo, and so that's great. And Melinda just sits there. Just sits there, and now probably all of a sudden thinking, she has an issue. Probably thinking she goes to some American sushi place that serves her baked fish on the thing. But you have to say, sushi is not generally served baked for you, Melinda. Fucking A. I mean, you're having a meeting. You're having a meeting for the menu. So, like, voice what you want. Don't do the thing where you're just hoping that they fall into a trap and then, like, mess up. And that way you can complain about it. Like, I have to say, I actually respect Jill Zarin more because Jill Zarin said exactly what she wanted and what she needed. And she put it out there. She said, just make this for me. And they did. Yeah, so Melinda's a real fucker. I'll tell you that. So, uh, and also the captain is annoying in this situation too. Because he insisted on being there. Like, I'm going to be there. To, so there's no miscommunication. If they're talking to my chef, I'm going to be right. So he knows what went down, right? Mm -hmm. And so he, is, Fraser is like, oh my God, shit show, disaster, insane person in the kitchen. Listen, Captain, there's no vegetarian option on the sushi. And he goes, oh, there's chef, there's no vegetarian option. Yeah, you were there. They didn't ask for that. Now, should the chef have guessed? About to say, Probably. The flip side is... The flip side is that they're still, as a chef, he should have still said, oh, I have to make something for the primary so that way she has something to eat beyond the crudités. He probably should have had the forethought to say, even if she's sitting right here and literally not telling me that she wants that, I should probably guess that she's going to want to even if she's not hungry right this second or something like that. Yes. But they were sitting there literally going every over every single thing and they not only okayed it, it's what they asked for. So... For the captain to be like, why isn't there a vegetarian option? Were you listening? You were standing right there, sir. <laughs> well, what's happening is Jill's rattling our cage too much, and we need to focus on the primary. The primary is number one. It's a huge fuck up, and it's and it's his fuck up. He's out of his depth, and we're gonna he's gonna implode, and I can't afford these mistakes anymore. Well, I don't know. You can't find someone to unclog a goddamn toilet at this point, so I don't suggest firing the chef. You know what I mean? No. I think get a stew before we uh, fire the chef. Yeah. Uh, pretty crazy. Wow. This is our first two part below deck in a little bit. Or maybe we just did a two part below deck. I, think I don't remember did, huh? what we do with two parts, but this is <laughs> well, this really, was a big uh... one. Listen, it's Jill Zarin, so you know you're gonna have to you're gonna get two parts out of a Jill Zarin episode. Yeah, that's a banner that's a banner episode for us guys. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. This was super fun. Um you know, we love you guys. Thanks for being with us. We uh, are doing our Could've Game of better. Thrones bonus this week, so go check that out. Um, we're also we also have Crappy Hour every week. It's every other Monday at five thirty p.m. Pacific time. Instagram live show, super fun, and uh, go get tickets for our live shows and our videos, a Patreon, everything like that over at WatchWhatCrappens.com. And we will talk to you next time. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.